This is a confusing disaster. This is my masterpiece. And this is the voice of Jess Paul. Welcome to my fakery. If you have no earthly idea what you're looking at right now, but clicked on the video because you were intrigued anyways, I'm a fake food artist amongst many other things. And this is the creation from beginning to end of one of my best selling products. For my longtime subscribers and listeners, you guys are the real MVPs. You might remember my famous photo shoot in the adorable retro diner where I showed off all of my fake foods at the time. And this was me rushing to get this pie done for that. If you're more of a cake person, I've made a video for that one too. But today I'm going to go into a little bit more depth about how these guys are born and give you some narration over the usual intoxicating royalty-free music. So to you, this might look exactly like pie crust, but surprise, it's a non-drying clay that I got from my supplies store. I don't remember if it's oil-based, water-based, or what it's even called because the wrapper is long gone. I will put all of my supplies down below, by the way. I'll figure them out. Just just not right now. So when you're making fake food, it is possible that with some items, you can take the actual food and petrify it, seal it, and actually just mold the real honest-to-God thing. But since a pie is quite fragile and involves a lot of liquid, I thought that it was the best idea to make this out of clay, which I was sure I wouldn't run into any problems with, which... <laughs> Oh man, why do I think that every single time? I'm sealing and filling a lot of the empty space that doesn't really need to be imprinted into the final design. When I make my future pumpkin meringue and apple pies, <laughs> watch out for those. I'm definitely going to use similar methods to fill the space even more because as you will see, I could have definitely used with a more superficial and shallow relief than what I'm making here. But I really wanted to make it realistic. I want, I really wanted it to look like those cherries were inside this pie crust. As you see here, it looks like I'm pulling apart a donut, which is exactly what I'm doing. I made two different donut molds. One was like I described before, which was an actual petrified donut. It came out looking so, so, so realistic that I sometimes want to eat it myself, even though I know it's made of foam. But I also attempted another mold out of clay, which actually gives it a much more perfect smooth, almost like a Japanese perfection kawaii look to it. And I don't know which one I like better. I kind of like them both. And I usually intermingle them when they're in a little pile together in a little box. You can tell how much I love my fake food by the sound of my voice. What I'm doing right now might or might not be necessary and or embarrassing in front of other clay artists because, again, I think that this is an oil-based clay, but I used water to create a kind of slick in order to homogenize the berries together like as if they're in some kind of liquid and also to make it a little bit smoother and to wipe out all the fingerprints. I'm just, I'm making this up. Jessica, you could not have looked up this clay before you did this narration. You just, you just couldn't have been bothered. If you're curious at all how I got into this line of business, so I originally was making donut crowns specifically. Tiny little donuts, group of eight, that go around your head like a flower crown. I'm a painter, and I made this adorable painting about a cat that was reaching for a donut. And I was trying to think of an accessory that I could make that would promote the print of the painting. And my sister very randomly like put a pillow that I had on my bed, which was a novelty prize from a carnival that was a giant donut and she said why don't you make a donut crown and I'm like that's kind of a good idea so from then I started making different kinds of donuts and different foods and now I'm a full-blown sculptor that's literally DIYing my way through this if you were looking for a professional video <laughs> don't watch any of my videos I am constantly experimenting failing and embarrassing myself all the while catching it on video whenever I can And now it's time to make my mold. I'm using Mold Star Fast 16, only remembering that so well because I'm looking at it right on the bucket. <laughs> if you guys know anything about me, 
I hate math. I also hate measuring. At this point, I've gotten pretty good at knowing exactly how much foam and how much silicone that I'll need for a project, but sometimes it just surprises me. This is a one-to-one -one AB mix ratio kind of product, so it makes it pretty easy to be mixing and filling for your own project. It's idiot proof. It's Jessica proof, which should be all the encouragement you'd ever need. If you can't tell, this was a to get out. And also, if you look a little bit closer, you'll see that I run into my first major problem. I I flooded my sculpture with the silicone. What I had to do from here, and what you're going to watch me do, is pick out all the pieces of clay. Then after that, in order to save this piece, I started cutting any silicone that I knew would be underneath the face of the piece. Again, I wanted to provide a lot of depth for the cherries inside, but I I did waste a lot of silicone and honestly don't know how to fix this. I guess I would cut the cherries in half and make them kind of float on a single layer of clay, but that takes a lot of time and I don't know if I'm gonna do that. And as you see here, I use a lot of the leftover pieces to make a slice of pie, which is another product in my store and another piece that I brought to the photo shoot, which you will be able to see at the end of this video. Wow, all the more reason to stick around. This is where I began to run out of silicone. Also began to panic in a frenzy because unlike the cream cheese, I didn't have any substitute materials that I could use to make my mold. And I was also racing time because it was beginning to cure fast. And it is called Mold Star Fast. That's where it gets its name. So my ingenious fix for this, the only thing I could think of at the moment, was to fill any of the empty spaces around the whipped cream so that it would raise the level of the silicone if I did not cover that whipped cream. It would have a giant gaping hole at the top of all the little peaks and would render the mold completely useless to me. I included this piece of footage because I wanted to publicly shame myself for not putting down any plastic for some reason when I finally filled my molds. Here's how that whipped cream mold turned out and then right beside it is our pie. You might be having a couple questions about it like where's its crust? Because I don't measure or read any directions, I did not mix enough foam to fill my mold. But I had such a wonderful face of at least the cherry and lattice work. And I also didn't have any more foam to make another one. So I tried to make the best of it. Okay, I know I said that the lattice work was like probably the best part of this, but actually painting has got to be my number one favorite part. I have perfectly mixed colors and a very simple and efficient technique to make it as similar as possible every single time. But I'll just let you guys watch and just enjoy the paint porn. And here they are! 
part. Please tell me in the comments what you really think of my fake food. I am still creating my collection, even though I think that these look pretty amazing. I'm still of the mindset that I can keep improving and I'm always, always learning. If this is something that needs to be in your life, I do have a store link and it's very prominently pictured down below, I'm sure. Even if you just want to browse because if it makes you as happy as it makes me, then you're going to have a really, really nice day. Now it's time to spin that wheel! Sometimes I like showcasing my fake food way more than this phase. Sometimes. Mystery? Mystery square? What do you guys think? Are you excited about this? So that was the spot for like anything goes. Maybe we'll do something completely new. If you're not subscribed, then you'll never know what the mystery square will provide to us. And if you have any level of care for my well-being, then you can click the, the thumbs up button. I hope you guys have the best week ever. And this is my outro.